I understand that every season is always a giant work in progress, regardless of personnel or teams or schedule yeah. or whatever. But over the last three games, how much more has this roster taken the shape that you were hoping it might when you guys first got together? I mean, yeah, every every uh, day that we're together, it gets a little bit better, right? Um, you know, certainly we're, we're still not at full strength, you know, in terms of having Sean out there, you know, to play in games. Um, you know, Joe Bam, you know, uh, you know, has had one game under his belt. And so, you know, the others have had quite a few. And so, you know, it is what it is. We just have to, you know, we have to do things a little bit quicker, you know, than we would have liked to. Have. Um, you know, every team in the country wants to have their roster at full strength, you know, game one and, you know, all the way through non-conference. That's not, it wasn't in the cards for us this year. And um, I think uh, we've just got to do our best, you know, to get them connected and, and uh, cohesive uh, as quickly as possible. And how close is Sean to being able to return? Yeah, I mean, this the rest of this week will kind of tell us where he's at. I mean, he looks pretty good, you know, but uh, the rest of this week, you know, leading up to the game will tell us kind of what we need to do. Um, and so I don't have a, an exact answer for you in terms of whether he's playing or not. Uh, that will be determined, you know, on how he does in the practices, you know, later today, next couple of days. How much does your time at uh, UMBC help you prepare for Eastern Shore? It just in, I don't know how much you played them, but I imagine. We played them one time. Uh, yeah, just one time, and it was a different coach. So uh, probably not really at all, uh, quite honestly. Um, but a ton of respect for uh, Coach Crafton, and he was actually an assistant coach at Navy when I was coaching at, at UMBC. And, um, you know, he's, uh, he, had a, he had an excellent team last year. He's had a, he's had a really hard schedule this year. Um, but, uh, you know, had a great win over Penn. You know, I think they've only had three home games total uh, this season. And, um, and so, and, and the teams that they've played are all really good. You know, they played Longwood at home, who's having a, you know, an awesome year so far. And, um, you know, played on the road at, at NC State, Notre Dame, and, and some other great programs. And so, uh, he's got a young team that's, you know, uh, you know very capable of beating anyone. You stuck with the same starting five, despite fluctuation in minutes elsewhere throughout the season. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, just trying to develop certainly a bench, right? Um, you know, and, and, uh, and get those guys comfortable. Um, and, you know, we'll kind of see how things shake out. Um, it's always great to have a young guy like Michael Bell get that type of experience, you know? Um, and, and certainly Kwani, you know, is, is a veteran player. And so, you know, for us as, as coaches and teammates, you know, we, we felt it was just a matter of time before he, he got comfortable. And um, I think you can kind of see that, you know, as he's playing now. He's, he's uh, that's, not, that's not easy to, to deal with, right, as a player, you know, um, to come out and not shoot the ball like you're capable of shooting it. That can impact a lot of other parts of your game. And, and uh, you know, to his credit, you know, he just kept working and didn't allow it to impact the other parts and still helped us win some games. Um, and so I think that's a huge thing, you know, sticking with him was, was something that we, we, uh, we wanted to do and, and needed to do for our, our, the overall, you know, health of our team. Toby at the five, what do those kind of lineups do for you guys? You've gone to him a lot in the second half. What does that person Yeah, I mean, that's where we're else? subbing him right now, right? I mean, early in the season, you know, like in Greece, we started him at the four, um, and we began to kind of sub him uh, exclusively at the five. Um, and whilst playing him occasionally at the four, um, you know, he, he's just, he's such a good athlete, he's such a good rebounder. Um, you know, he could finish around the rim. Uh, defensively, he's a problem. Uh, you know, because he can block shots. And so, um, you know, I've been really impressed with what he's been able to do. It doesn't mean you won't ever see him at the four. You know, there's certainly lineups where he can, he can do both. He can play with firm. Um, you know, as long as you have the right guys, the other three guys, you know, or, or match that. Um, you know, he can play with Kwani, you know, out there. Um, he can play with Sean once Sean gets back. Um, so it's, uh, he's a very versatile guy, and, and um, 
one that can play certainly two positions. The goal for him long term is to be able to play more than two. You've talked about this, but Sean's versatility allows you to do a lot of different things yeah. lineup wise once he does return, right? Yeah, no question. I mean, because he's a ball handler, you know, he can play in pick and roll. Uh, you know, he's an ISO guy, he can attack his matchup. Um, he's really good in transition, um, and so he's used to playing fast. Um, and I think overall our team's getting better at that. Um, you know, over the last couple of games, we've, we've been able to, to get out and go a little more. Um, and so he, he can play in the post, you know, he can, he can back you down, you know, and play in that, in that area of the court as well. So, um, you know, he is certainly a really versatile guy that, that will, will help our team. We saw it in the press conference. You probably talked about this over the weekend a little bit, but Joe's an incredibly upbeat guy and yeah. smiling all the time. What have you seen as far as him, his impact goes with the rest of the roster and everyone around him since he's returned? Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's a huge thing. I think it, it opens everybody's eyes to, you know, um, what this team hopefully can become, right? And it's our job to, you know, I say our job, the, the team's job, you know, to reach our potential, you know, our full potential. We have some good pieces and we're adding two more back now uh, that can be really helpful for, for the overall health of the team. Um, but we've got to put it together. We've got to make them fit and make these pieces fit and get them playing really well together. Well, leading back to the Memphis game, you talked about wanting the transitional defense to be better. Yep. And what have you seen specifically in that spot the last two games? You're talking about our transition defense? Yeah. Uh, it, it's actually improved. Yeah, it's definitely improved. There were some clips, you know, in the last game where, you know, it could have been a layup, probably would have been a layup or an easy shot you know, for the other team, but our guys got back and loaded up and, you know, made them go to the next level of their offense. Um, and so that's the first, you know, thing that you really look at from a defensive perspective is, you know, are you taking away easy baskets? Are you finding a way to make that extra effort, that multiple effort that it takes to, you know, keep a team off a of quality look? Um, and so, you know, it's something that we have to constantly you know, check and work on, um, but, you know, defensively specifically, it was okay in the first half. It wasn't you know, what we needed in the second half at all. And so the guys, you know, today will see some of that, you know, when we go back and watch film. Um, you know, just because we're scoring uh, a little bit better doesn't mean you know, that all of a sudden our defense, you know, can let up. Our defense has to be there every single game, and it wasn't last game. The assist numbers, I think you had nearly 20 on 30. I think we had 18, 18 yeah. On 30 field goal attempts. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular like number you would like to see? Uh, or a ratio? Or yeah, I mean, I think it, a lot of it comes down to how many turnovers you have, you know, as well. Because, you know, there are certain teams that, you know, depending on how they guard you, and I think we're going to be guarded a little bit differently, you know, now that Joe's, Joe's out there, Sean comes back. Um, you know, there are certain teams that will lock out. And so there aren't as many assists out there because they're just, they're face guarding you. And so they're not allowing you to get that extra pass, you know, for the shot. They're making you go one-on-one -on -one to score. And so really the game just tells you, you know, what you have to do. And um, clearly teams have been loading up on us. And so we, we have to pass and we have to trust. Um, you know, the assists a lot of times come in transition, you know. Um, like one of the one of the best ones of the the game the other day was when Bell drove it down the middle and it was like a one dribble and he drops it to Toby and Toby just puts it in like that. I mean that was a beautiful thing. Um, but we also had Max kicking it up the court to you know JNL and JNL bangs a three from the corner. Like that happened really really fast. Um, so uh, you know I think I think we're all comfortable with where it's at, but we understand that it can be better. And our job is to help our guys, you know, see that. Temple showed up a, a little bit of zone. Yeah. Uh, so one was, did you expect that from them? And two, yeah. how did you like your offense against their zone? Yeah, I've been very, you know, uh, comfortable with what our guys have done against the zone, you know, so far this season. Um, you know, uh, it hasn't been perfect. You know, we've taken some quick shots, you know, against the zone. Um, you know, the first time that another team goes to a zone is the most important possession of the game. And so we try not to, you know, help our guys, we try not to get them to overthink it, right? 
Um, it's it's uh, certainly a different defense. Uh, and you know we play against it every day. We've been working on our own zone, and so they, they have a chance to, to go against that every day as well. So it gets them comfortable with it. But um, you know it certainly can change the momentum of a game. You know there's no doubt about it. Um, you know if you're clicking on offense, the other coach goes to a zone. You know it can slow things down, and uh, you know you, you have to have your your team has to be ready for that. And I thought our guys did a nice job. You know against it the other day. Would you uh, would you try to get Longwood on a future schedule? Or I don't think so. No? To be honest, I don't think he wants to do it. I don't think I want to do it. You know, it's just one of those we're best friends. Probably not. Probably not a good good thing to do. <laughs> well, that, that's why I asked. But you, you obviously you're keeping track of him now. Because people do it though. <laughs> actually, people do it. I yeah. Mean, Rick Pitino played his son. You know, last right. year. So people do it, but you know we like each other too much. <laughs> but just, the, I mean, his whole story. Yeah, um, yeah. You know what he was doing, and then yeah. you know you kind of drafted him in, and now he's done what he's done yeah, down no, there. I mean, he was a huge part of our success, you know, at, at UMBC. You know, as uh, was all the guys that that I was fortunate enough to work with, you know, up there. Um, but uh, he had his hundredth win, you know, the other day. And uh, so I congratulated him on uh, winning his hundredth case. <laughs> Put a brand new arena. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's. I mean, that's they got momentum yeah. down there that I don't think they've ever had before. No doubt. I mean, it's it's uh, it's really incredible. It's really fun to see. You know, it's like how he's captured that place and his team, teams. You know, because it's not just one team. Um, you know. Uh, you know, his president, Taylor Reevely, uh, my former AD, Tim Hall, you know, the guy that hired me at UMBC is now there uh, at Longwood, just got hired this past year. And so it's neat to see them together. You know, they had already worked together, you know, before, but they're doing a great job. You know, I haven't seen the new arena yet, but I've heard, you know, great things about it. And, uh, you know, it's just really fun, you know, as a friend to kind of watch them, you know, continue to grow. Anything else, guys? Cool. Thanks, Coach.